right, we're going on to our last garden now. This is Maria Sargent's garden in Danville. Uh, Maria's garden is 1,300 square feet, 90% uh, native. It was installed five years ago in the spring of 2005. Um, it was lawn, pyracantha, and ground cover. Um, after hearing Pete Bayou of East Bay Wilds give a talk on gardening with native plants, Maria was sold on the idea. She received a $100 lawn construction state from the East Bay Municipal Utility District to uh, partially fund the conversion and uh, Pete designed and installed the garden. This garden contains 10 species of manzanita and five different types of California lilac, which provides structure and greenery throughout the year. The garden now uses half the water that it once did. Um, birds and bees uh, sip water from the bird bath. This looks like a uh, Channel Island um, bush poppy. Um, Maria made this bird bath. She has a number of them in her garden as well as other mosaics that she has made. Um, so I think let's now go to Maria in Danville. And hello, Maria, how are you? Are they muted? Hello. Hi, Maria. Yeah. So the first thing I want to mention is I've been watching the program all day long, and it's been wonderful. But I just want to reiterate to some of the newer people that there are a lot of microclimates around, um, even between here and other parts of Danville or here in San Ramon can be a lot different. So just be careful, just because Danville doesn't mean all the plants that are in my garden are going to work for you. So Kathy did do a, a little introduction, but I also want to introduce Tina Gallagher, who is holding the camera for me today. She's the one that got me interested. Um, she invited me to the Danville Alamo Garden Club meeting, and that's where I met Pete Ballou. And um, I, was, I was hooked on doing native gardens after meeting um, after meeting Pete. So I am, I moved here in 1960. I'll do the math for you. That's 60 years ago. And I won't tell you what grade I was in, but that was before 680 and 580 was even built. So we used to use just the two lane road to get to Walnut Creek and that was it. So it's been a long time. And, um, I'm going to have Tina start looking at some of the before pictures and the before pictures will show um, the, the usual, the big trees that somebody had talked about, these are not native trees, but they had the ground cover. You have the rocks surrounding with the bender board, the pyracantha, things like that. So um, I decided after, after meeting Pete and talking to Pete that I just needed a change. And I was so fortunate to get Pete as a landscape designer. He's so artistic, as you'll see in my garden later. Um, the first thing he asked me is, what do you want, Maria? I said, I would like flowers and I would like you to keep all my rocks, the hardscape as much as possible. I'd like you to repurpose them. When I began, I thought there was only one type of manzanita and that was it. Well, I soon found out that that was a lot different. So we're gonna start by, oh, forgot to mention. So when Pete took out the lawn and he did take out one. Mike, can you come? So we're having some visual problems and some audio problems as well here. So let's see if we can't uh, take a moment to work them out. And um, while we're waiting to see if Tina comes back, um, if she does not, we will jump ahead. I think we'll jump ahead now and we'll go look at the Garden Tour website. Um, while we are waiting to see if our um, host comes back. Oh, there they are. I think they've returned to us. Okay, so let's pick up. Let me just say while we're just solving this problem that uh, we have a lovely ending for this show today. So I hope you stick with us. And all right, so we're back with you again. We're back. All so. Right. Pete um, recommended that we take out one tree so I could have a lot more sun. And he, the earphone won't work. <laughs> so uh, Pete recommended 
that I take out one of the trees and we did, and we use the mulch from that tree. Um, and then he also turned over the grass. So he took it out little 12 inch squares and he turned over the grass instead of sheet mulching the grass. Can you hear me now, folks? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Okay, because the earbuds aren't working. That's so, okay, you're doing great. Okay, the first um, plant we're gonna work on, we're gonna look at the sunny part of the garden first. And the first plant is a keystone plant. I have a lot of keystone plants here. And this is a goldenrod, a, sol a solidago. And we've got some signs. Check it out. Okay. okay. And the next plant we have is a giant chalk dudlia. And it happens to be in a container because during the summer, this anvil gets so, so hot that that container has to get put in the backyard in the shade. Okay. The next plant we have is a common lipia, and this is a great ground cover. It just really um, spreads very, very quickly. Little tiny flower, about a half inch flower called the common lipia. So I'm hoping you can go back later and look at this on YouTube and, and see these plants. The next thing I have that I wanna show you is I plant a lot of native bulbs. See, now and we've I got a little bit of your hand in on the right hand uh, side of the screen. If you could oh, yeah. move oh, your I'm hand sorry. a little bit. I'm sorry. Now we're okay. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay, thanks. So the next thing is I buy a lot of native, native bulbs and I buy them from uh, Telos Bulb Place or Annie's Annuals. And I leave these signs up for the whole year because during the summer, these plants will die down. These bulbs will die down and I don't know where they are. So if I want to plant more of them, um, I need to know where they are in my garden. They require no water in during the summer. I buy them during the summer, plant them in the fall, and we hopefully will get them in the spring. Moving along, somebody else today had sulfur buckwheat in their yard. And this buckwheat does particularly well here in Danville. Hot, hot sun. It just loves the heat. This is the Shasta sulfur buckwheat, another keystone plant. The next plant is a sage, another keystone. This is a larger bush. And I do cut back my, my plants in the fall. I do cut back my plants. Uh, this is the whirly blue sage. Okay. And um, the next thing I have here is these are little baskets. And this, I have a lot of birds because I feed my birds. I also have five bird baths. So I have to buy these clotches from gardeners.com. I'm not trying to sell them from gardeners.com um, to cover any new little plants that I plant. And um, they've been very beneficial, these little baskets. You can also make them out of chicken wire. The next sage I have is a Shirley's creeper sage. And it's more of a ground cover at about 12 inch height. But I also have to cut this one back um, in the fall. And I think this point, uh, Tina's going to do a panorama, and I'm hoping we have time to get up to the shade part of the garden. But you'll see all the rocks that Pete put in. He made this stone path, this flagstone path for me, with all the rocks that were around my tree. So I was really happy that he was able to repurpose all these rocks. Somebody wants to know about the name of the baskets again. Oh, the baskets right here. Plotchies at gardeners.com. Gardeners.com. And sometimes they have sales. <laughs> the next thing is down here, mm -hmm. Everett's Choice. Uh, somebody else mentioned this about the fuchsia. Uh, the hummingbirds love these red flowers in the fall. So, and this thing just spreads and spreads all over the place. So if you don't want it, don't plant it, but it's, it's beautiful. And I try to have flowers year round. I love my flowers. Um, what happened? Are we out again? Keep going. Okay. Talking. The next one is Rose. Rose. Rose quit calling me. So it sounds like when a call comes in, you get disconnected. So we yeah. right. And a neighbor's trying to get, connect us and um, it's not working. Okay. Oh. Um, 
So I can uh, hop ahead and do a little, um, I think I'm gonna show you some things on the Garden Tours website while we're waiting to see, oh, looks like we got reconnected. Oh. Our neighbor's trying to get a hold of her to make sure she knows that uh, they're on. Huh. Okay. So the next thing I um, wanna show you, I have baby blue eyes. Um, I ordered from Annie's annual this year is it kind of, yeah, let me get this pen out of the way. I ordered from Annie's Annual and they shipped about 36 plants to me. I, none of them receded from last year because I think my birds. So I ordered, what did I order? Tidy tips, cream cups, sparkia, wind poppies, metal foam, blue thimble flowers, penny black. And these are all native annuals. You know, I used to love marigolds and things like that. I've kind of switched over these days. The next is the Pacific Coast um, Hybrid Iris. I did it. I did this time. Oh, ah, I did that. So, Tina, when you get reconnected, if you can try to um, freeze the camera on a plant a little bit longer, it'll come better into focus for us. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So, this is the Pacific Coast Hybrid Iris. This is the native iris not those tall ones you see. Um, I hear that Pete is still open and he still might have some that are in bloom so you could see the colors and pick them out and plant them. So this is the native iris. Uh, the next thing is we have the Point Reyes manzanita. This is a low growing manzanita and it requires shade. Not all manzanita, especially here in Danville, require the sun. And it's a beautiful color, beautiful color. Um, the berries are just now starting to get on. The next plant we have is the purple sage. This is getting rather large in the bush and I'll probably trim it back because it's getting onto the street right now. So I'll trim that one back. And all of these sages, the manzanitas, they're all keystone plants. Okay, the next thing is we're gonna look up and this tall plant in the back is a Julia Phelps cyanosis. And right behind that is my kitchen window. So we'll be working our way up around the kitchen window and you can see what I see out here. Whenever this thing blooms in the spring, this plant, it's just beautiful. And we have a couple pictures to show you. Whoops, let me take the tape off. It's a little windy, like somebody said. Um, and whenever, it blooms in the spring. We know Maria's garden is coming to life. The neighbors love to look at this plant. It's a beautiful blue, small flower, Julia Phelps. I think it's about eight feet tall now. Okay, moving along, we have the pink island yarrow. And this one has really spread too. It's a beautiful pink flower. Oops. Okay. It's beautiful. Beautiful pink flowers. Okay, keep moving along. And somebody else had a sunflower, I remember in their yard. This is a different sunflower. This is a Delta sunflower. And I got this from Annie's annual. This is the sunflower you see on Highway 99 as you're driving during the summertime. It just comes up off the side of the road. So I planted about three or four of these. The finches love the leaves of these in the fall. So, wait, we're going to... We're gonna stand back. Okay, so we're doing a little panorama here. We have um, a Austin Griffith manzanita. Right. We have a island bush poppy, which we'll talk about later. That's one of my highlights. We have a white cloud manzanita. We have a Valley Violet Cyanosis. Somebody else had one of those on the tour today. Beautiful, not bright, bright blue, but it's a purple blue, Valley Violet. And then this is the um, plant that Pete was talking about, the Artemisia, the low-lying Artemisia. So beautiful, mm, love the smell of this Artemisia. And that's this Artemisia happens to be another um, um, keystone plant. <laughs> We're trying to get out of the bed. It's beautiful though, from the street. Yeah. Okay, moving around by the mailbox, we'll skip some of these plants because we don't have that much time. But I have another Dudleya here. 
and this is the Dudley Ahasii, and I had to cover it because the birds kept pecking away at it. So right now it is covered. About another month it should be flowering, I'm hoping a beautiful uh, yellow flower, but it, it is temporarily out of the bird's range. They don't get to have that. <laughs> then we move into Coville's lip fern. This is a fern that's for the shade. It is not a sun loving um, plant. Sun. sun. This is a sun loving plant. Sun, what did I say? Sun, <laughs> sun loving. This is a sun loving plant. Oh, it is a sun loving. Sorry, it's not shade. Sorry. Right. It's been a test. <laughs> it has been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving up. I just used to be in the sun. Moving up, uh, this was one of the bulbs that I got from Annie Daniels, and it's a camacia. So I just planted that this year, and I am just so delighted that this bulb, uh, it's a three, three bulbs came up. You're supposed to plant odd numbers at a time. Good luck. So the camacia, and I'm hoping it'll come back again next year. It should. That yeah, looks so pretty with your penstemon. So I have penstemon behind it. I have the poppies. Uh, not as many poppies came back this year. I think the birds got a lot of my seeds in the fall. And the orange? The orange bowling ball. I love to do ceramics. So now I'm moving on to bowling balls and doing bowling balls. Maria, and can I ask you to stop here and just for um, Tina to lift the camera up and give us an overview of your garden. We can just get a sense of the scale of it and maybe do a super slow. Yeah, just look up the uh, paths and then just trees for a moment because you have such an interesting and beautiful, uh, you know, panorama yes. garden. Okay, good. All right, thank you for humoring me. Okay. Okay. Just quickly um, repeat the name of the sunflower you showed earlier. A few people would like to know what the scientific name was for that, the botanical name. It, it was the Delta. And I'm not sure the science, Anna something. So it's, I have a plant list and maybe go back and replay this. <laughs> So, well, the plant list is uh, on the Garden Tour website, so you yeah. can look up the, the common name sunflower and you'll find the Latin name right next to it on uh, Maria uh, Sargent's Garden in Danville on the website. Oh, and I just see the, the link was just um, uh, put into the chat box. If, if, oh, okay. good. Okay. 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 Um, a couple things. You want to okay. go? Okay. Where do you want to go? So. I do love my birds. I do like a manicured garden. However, they get to keep this like fescue. This would be, if I was to replant one, this is what it would look like. However, the birds have pecked away at this. They use it for their nests. So I am, and they, they get little bugs out of there. So they get to keep this fescue. Um, we also have a woolly blue curl. This is my third time I'm gonna try it and see what happens. If it doesn't work this time, it's out. It looks really healthy. So this is the island bush poppy. And a lot of people have problems growing this. But Pete, he took another group of rocks, mixed them with dirt, and mounded, made a mound here. So it is planted in a mound. It's got very, very good drainage. Um, I have it staked up underneath. And in the fall, I do cut it back a little and take off all the dead leaves. So I think this is the best year it's looked, to tell you it's the truth. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, over here, um, I have the asters that Doug talked about. It's very important to have asters in your yard. So these are the native asters. Then I have an Apiana sage, which is a white sage. And that's got a very nice aroma too on the leaves. And these dead sticks. Is that it? Yep. These dead sticks, these are left over from last year but I keep them there because the birds love to land on them and just hang out. So these sticks are here from last year and I didn't have the heart to take them away. Then we have um, a red flag. So anytime I plant a new plant in my yard, I put a little red flag to me to keep an eye on it. And I, and I usually plant in the winter, but this winter we had like seven weeks with no rain. So anything that had a red flag on, I would supplement with some water. So just to keep a, you know, you hate to buy a plant and then have it die that so quickly. Then um, there was a party at my house by the animals one night that I didn't get invited to, but the next day I found out, this is all in one night. And this was September 8th, 2018. The first thing that came through at 907 was a skunk. Okay. 
And then the neighbor's cat came through at 1022. And then 1046, 20 minutes later, the raccoon comes through. This is across my driveway. Um, and then the skunk comes back at around 11. This is all one night, remember. Then the raccoon family decides to drop in about 1106. I guess it heard about the party. I think there's four of them in there, what I was thinking. And then the skunk comes back at almost 2 a.m. So don't let your animals out at night. If the dog wants out, go out with the leash. And then what do we have here? A gray fox came through at 2.17 a.m. And then the neighbor's cat is back at 6 a.m. This cat is out all night long. So this is a residential neighborhood. However, Tina, we live. Right. We live two blocks within some places that have five acres and Las Trompas. Yeah. Near so Los we're Los very close to wildlife. So also an opossum came through another night. I get a lot of opossums and they go into my backyard. And I also get deer that come through. And I think they probably are coming in through the water. They wanna come down for the, by October it's getting pretty dry around here. So if you look here, you'll see, um, as Doug said, I can have my seeds. I have five to seven bird feeders that I keep going all the time. These are under an overhang so the food does not get moldy in the winter. Um, here's one of my bird baths. I have five bird baths and they are pretty much in demand. That you made. I made this, this was one of the first I made. So then this is from my kitchen window. This is what I get to look at. Oh my God, there's a bird, bird here. Um, this is what I get to look at every morning when I'm making my coffee. I've got my Cianothus that people can't see me looking at them. I've got my bowling ball that I made out of marbles. Kind of reminds me of my childhood days playing playing marbles with my bowling or not bowling but with my marbles so um and then uh a couple bird baths and people have commented on having a bird bath on the ground to tell you the truth that's the number one bird bath that's used the birds will just walk right into that while after they eat their seed a lot of times they'll walk in or the skunks or the raccoons that come through would like to drink out of that. I just recently made this one this year. So this big one um, over Easter, the cedar wax wings uh, came in, a flock of about 35 or 40 came in for like um, three days in a row. And I, I've heard that they were migrating north. So they stopped in, they didn't eat anything, but they did drink water out of all five of my baths. So I was excited. First time I've ever had cedar wax wings here. And I also had, what did I have last week? a hooded oriole came in last sure, week okay. that I've never had. So I'm starting to get more. So coming around here, we have the hummingbird sage. Oh, you have to look at this water. This, this oh, here's amazing. another one. My shark bird bath. I don't know. The birds don't like that shark. I, don't think. I made that one too. Um, hummingbird sage, they're not blooming as much as I thought. And I saw in somebody else's garden, they were really blooming. I'm thinking I might've cut it back too late this past year. So I do cut them down. They get kind of raggedy by the end. So um, anyway. They should look nice and green. They're green and they really spread. That was like five of them two years ago. So they do spread like somebody else said. Now this blue witch, this been bees on it all day long. Oh, it's beautiful. And um, I've cut it back twice. Pete taught me how to cut it back and you got to water it extra when you do cut it back. But I think this was like a gallon or a two gallon plant five years ago. So, um, yeah. and, it's, and it's spread to other parts of the garden. And it's spread to other, it spreads a lot. Um, so, Maria, we probably could finish up in the next two minutes or so if you wanna think of your last sort of things you'd like to say. Okay, okay. you wanna just go over to yeah. the Luisa? Yeah. Okay, we'll keep going. We'll go on, we're just going through the garden quickly. But I did wanna make, make, make a comment about the Louisia here. And Pete does a lot of Louisia in the pots. And so I do have one uh, in a pot. This one happens to be growing in the rocks, good drainage. This is the only plant, the only plant that I fertilize once every three months with Os Osmocote. So this plant does require some fertilizing uh, once every three months with Osmocote. Real quick with the shaded garden, we have some lupin. Lupin does very well in the shade. We have um, columbine. We have the hookahs. These are all shade-loving plants. More iris. Go back into the native. Okay. Um, and then 
this this garden is I've been kind of working on. I've got some more asters. Pete was talking about these asters. These are your shade asters, the plumus asters, beautiful purple flower in the fall. Pete sells these and they've just really spread. But I also want to talk about this um, no, sorry. this mimulus back here. There was a discussion today about monkey flowers and whether they should be hybrids or things like that. This monkey flower that I get at the Native Peer Nursery in Berkeley is the Mount, um, Mount Diablo Black Point Trail monkey flower. This one has done the best in my yard. It's the tallest one in my yard and it is, it is a native mimulus, so it's not a hybrid. So do you think you need to do the book? No, no. Okay, let's just do a, a panorama. Okay, then Tina's gonna do a quick panorama. Go slow, Tina. Don't do a quick one, do a slow one, okay? <laughs> Sorry for all the technical today. That's all right. It happens. Your garden will slow down a little more, Tina. Go real super slow, okay? Because the camera can't focus. There you go. We pressed it right there. That's exactly the speed. Perfect. Got the owl. So slow down a little bit more, Tina. <laughs> I thought we were closing. <laughs> and I do not feed my hummingbirds any water, but they seem to be around my garden. So I must have enough plants that they like. So my, my birds I do feed, um, but the hummingbirds I do not. So uh, I must say your island poppy, bush I, poppy is just spectacular. Yeah, this island bush poppy this year has just been phenomenal. But Stenosis was also. Yeah, that's the beginning. Yeah. Maria's coming to life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Maria, you have a beautiful garden. I've seen it a number of times and it is really spectacular. Well, and you know, I think part of it was Pete. Um, he is so artistic. I was so fortunate that, that we were able to work together and that he designed this whole thing. Um, and I, I feel very fortunate that I've gotten to know Pete over the years because of this garden. So. Oh, well, yeah. uh, Maria and Tina, thank you for <clears throat> taking us on a tour of Maria's garden.